problem, it is satisfies the additional probability, property, okay, that mu of omega is 1, then you call such measure as a probability, probability measure. Okay. Uh, what would be example of it? We'll be interested in mostly probability measure settings. This is what that we we'll like to, you know, that this is what we have, where we like to, you know, reach and you know. Have. So this is what the key thing is. So the example is going to be something that you might have learned in your school. That let's define a mu. Okay. So let's take a finite set. Okay, one to up to n, maybe head tail, something like that. Okay, and uh, take f to be collection the power set of x, collection of subsets, collection of all events, okay. and take mu to be a map from the events to the number. So, so it's like you know, going in zero, one, such that, such that. That if you measure an event from you know, an event from it, so it must give you the chance actually of happening it. And what would be the chance of it? Are you going to compute? So, so you just need to say that okay, how much, how many are the elements in this event, and you divide that by the number of elements in the number of mega. So if you define your mu in this way, then this mu is not only a measure, but it's a probability measure. So when you are measuring probabilities through this definition, so you are measuring something, so you are measuring chances actually. So it's sir, a measure. Sir, the general of the definition the used to be a measure equals it in a second exam. Okay. I mean, okay. In, 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 in for the probability measure is equivalent that you, you know you take mu of mt is 0 or mu of omega to be 1 actually. So, okay. Sir, random variable is a measure? It's not a measure, it's a measurable function. Okay, so we'll talk about, so that's what we would like to reach today. What's, what is the meaning of a measurable function actually and why we want to define it. Okay, but let's deal with the first measure side. Okay. Uh, what would be the thing? So what would you, so what will happen if you put a you know empty set here? Yeah. So you're gonna get an empty set the order of empty set divided by order of omega, so you're gonna get a zero. What happens if you put an omega here? One. So you get a one actually. Two conditions are satisfied. And what happens if you put a union of AIs here? So you're gonna get order of union of AIs. Exclusion. But we know that since all these you know sets are disjoint, so the order of their union is going to be the sum of the order set. Okay? So you can verify that this is also a measure, not only a measure, but it's a probability measure. Okay. So you want to see this, you know, see in detail the last lecture that I have. Let's move on. Finally, so I'm not going into much detail, but finally I would like to talk about a very particular kind of a sigma algebra. For that sigma algebra is going to be a sigma algebra on R actually. Okay, so this is what, so R is going to be R, R or maybe Rn is going to be our key example that we are interested in. Okay. So, I am taking a sigma algebra, F, okay, and I am defining a sigma algebra, F, in this manner. So there are various ways to define it. I have discussed one way explicitly yesterday, okay, that how to define 
um, sigma algebra. Okay, this kind of a sigma algebra on R. So F is a collection of all those sets are maybe the subsets of R such that so either A is an open interval. Okay. So either A is an open interval or A can be written as the union of countable number of open intervals actually. Okay. So what essentially we have? We have uh, open intervals and the countable number of open intervals and collection of 